So to begin with, what is Rosa Raid? Rosa Raid consists of three dungeons, 12-5, 12-6, and 12-7. 12-5 must be cleared before 12-6, and 12-6 must be cleared before 12-7. Most players clear all three dungeons in a row. This is referred to as a gaunt. Each dungeon has three phases. Your progression through the dungeons is reset every week. If you haven't cleared Rosa Raid yet on a character, that character is referred to as fresh. Each time you clear a phase in Rosa Raid for the first time each week, you will get a Mystic Stone drop when the phase is cleared. In addition, you will be able to claim a reward cube for each phase you clear for the first time each week. Every time you accept a reward cube, it will increase the Flames of Judgment Demonic Weapon Cube drop rate increase bar. Filling up this bar will not guarantee a drop though. So why should you farm Rosa Raid? You should do Rosa Raid because there are rewards exclusive to the content that are essential for your progression and cannot be obtained elsewhere. Most notably, you get the FOJ, Exodia, and Mystic Stones. Every time when you clear 12-7 Phase 3 for the first time each week, you have a chance of getting the Flames of Judgment Demonic Weapon Cube. The Flames of Judgment Demonic Weapon is referred to as the FOJ. Every time when you clear 12-7 Phase 3 for the first time each week, you have a chance of getting the Mark of Inferno Accessory Cube. Mark of Inferno is often referred to as MOI. Also, every time when you clear 12-6 Phase 3 for the first time each week, you have a chance of getting the Demonic Eye Accessory Cube. And every time when you clear 12-5 Phase 3 for the first time each week, you have a chance of getting the Undying Flame Accessory Cube. The three Rosa Raid accessories are referred to collectively as Exodia. And as mentioned earlier, every time you clear a phase in Rosa Raid for the first time each week, you will get a Mystic Stone drop. In addition, you will be able to accept a reward cube that will also give you a Mystic Stone. Essentially, you will get 18 Mystic Stones every time you clear Rosa Raid. Mystic Stones can be sold on the board for ED and or they can be used to empower your FOJ weapons once you get them. When someone else in your party drops a weapon, you will get a Blazing Crystal. These can be exchanged to the Blacksmith and Elrino for various rewards. Most notably, you can trade 20 Blazing Crystals for an FOJ cube or 5 Blazing Crystals for any of the Rosa Raid accessory cubes. You can also dismantle FOJs for 5 Blazing Crystals each or Rosa Raid accessories for 1 Blazing Crystal each. So next I want to talk about Crimson Trace reset tickets. Hopefully you have caught on already, but you only can get rewards for Rosa Raid once per character per week. There is an item called a Crimson Trace Reset Ticket. This item allows you to reset your progress so you can obtain all the rewards from Rosa Raid again. You only can use up to two Crimson Trace Reset Tickets per character per week. So if you have a Crimson Trace Reset Ticket, you can go to the rewards and then reset your progress, clicking this button here. There are multiple ways to obtain a Crimson Trace Reset Ticket. However, there is a weekly quest per character that gives you an aerial Crimson Trace Reset Ticket when you clear 12-7 Phase 3. This essentially means that every week you can get rewards from Rosa Raid twice. Other ways to obtain a Crimson Trace Reset Ticket are on the screen right now. I personally don't really see it as a necessity to get more Crimson Trace Reset Tickets beyond the free one you get from the weekly quest. So how do you farm Rosa Raid? So generally, you will only be getting rewards from Rosa Raid twice on a character. So in order to bypass this weekly restriction and most efficiently progress through the game, I highly encourage you to make multiple characters that can do Rosa Raid. Rosa Raid is a dungeon that can have up to six players. Only one to two of these players actually have to be DPS or players that deal damage. Everyone else can be support characters. This means that you only need to survive and use support skills to help out the DPS in your party. In Elsword, if you're only playing a character as support, you only need to hit the minimum CP requirements to enter the dungeon. In other words, you do not need to invest a lot into your character. For Rosa Raid, this is 332.5k CP. The FOJ and Exodia cubes, Blazing Crystals, and Mystic Stones you get from Rosa Raid are all being shareable. So it doesn't matter which character you get the rewards on, you can always funnel everything back to your main or the character you want the rewards on. So the first thing that you need to do is learn how to play Rosa Raid, and guides for each of the dungeon are linked in the description below. And then the second thing you need to do is make the right classes. So not all classes are good support classes. When making characters to farm Rosa Raid with, pick from the following classes. So you either want Aether Sage, Odd Sorcerer, Metamorphy, Daybreaker, Comet Crusader, Centurion, Apsara, Shakti, Blue Hen, Radiant Soul, Celestia, or Nyx Pieta. I would highly recommend making either Comet Crusader or Radiant Soul first, as they are some of the most wanted support classes, along with having naturally high CP, which makes it easier to hit the CP requirements on them. Radiant Soul, as a labby, is also faster than level compared to other characters. As a side note, you should never have to worry that making other classes is a waste of your time. All classes can be registered to the L Search Party Collection and are part of potentially useful synergies. The L Search Party Collections and Synergy are not systems you need to worry about for this guy, but I did want to bring it up. Centurion gives up to 5% damage dealt by boss monsters decrease when registered into the L Search Party Collection. This is a very important stat for birth rate. 
Absara is a part of the Accomplished Step synergy that gives item drop rate increase 8%. Shakti is part of the Adept Step synergy that gives EXP gain increase plus 10%. Bluehead, Radiant Soul, and Nyx Pieta are all a part of the It's Fine Cause It Hurts synergy, which is a very commonly used synergy for Birth Raid. Radiant Soul gives up to 1.5% magical attack power increase when registered into the l Surge Party Collection. This is very important to get for players who main a magical class. Celestia gives up to 1.2% ignore magical defense, and Nyx Pieta gives up to 1.2% ignore physical defense when registered into the l Surge Party Collection. This is a very important stat for Birth Raid as well. Elsword gives you 15 character slots for free. One concern players have with making Rosal Raid Alts is that they don't want to pay 50 mil ED to expand their character slots. When you make a new character, you can do the epic quests again. This will give you around 150 mil ED if you do the epic quests from Landlock to Elria Node, which not only pays for the 50 mil ED cost of the character slot, but also for the Elsword Party Collection registration fee of 60 mil ED and giving you some leftover ED to work with. For more detailed information on how much ED you get from Epic Quest, please refer to the link in the description. Another concern players have with making Rosal Raid Alts is that they worry about not having a Fetch Aura. In the next couple clips, I will show you where you can pick up the rewards if you don't have a Fetch Aura. You can also get a free fetch aura from the L Star signing event, event dungeon, or the El Rios City Run event dungeon in 60 days. You can also get a free fetch aura from the following sources on the screen right now. And these sources allow you to have enough free fetch aura to get a permanent one from the event dungeon. Also, as a side note, in the very near future, we should be getting an update that gives every character a free fetch aura. You can always buy a fetch aura from the ED shop as well. And finally, there is also a misconception that if your main is a good support class and or DPS, that it is a waste of time to make Rosal Raid ults. This is false. As already mentioned, you need to make classes anyways for Elsearch Priority Collection and Synergy, and they pay for themselves. Ultimately, it's not like you can't only have one character to do Rosal Raid on, but it is inefficient and you will most likely take a lot longer to gather the rewards you need from the raid. So once you've made the right classes, you will need to learn how to play your character as support. If you refer to the document linked in the description, it will tell you which skills you should be using on X character to support your team. Also linked in the description is a guide on freezing. Freezing is a common thing done in Rosa Raid, so it's good to know about it. And after that, you will need to hit the 332.5k CP requirement. For the current meta, you can hit the CP requirement easily with a free plus sign secret dungeon weapon and the free plus sign Aureon armor you obtain from the epic quests. For more information on how to hit the CP requirement, please refer to the in-depth guide linked in the description. And finally, you will need to find and or form a party. TLDR to join and or form a party, you want to join the Discord server that is linked in the description. And for more in-depth information on how to find or form a party, please refer to the guide linked in the description as well. And then obviously, once you get the rewards from the Rosal Raid, you want to know what to do with them. So for more in-depth information on how to build your FOJ after you obtain it, please refer to the guide linked in the description. And for more in-depth information on costume and accessory builds or how to build around your Exodia, please refer to the guide linked in the description as well. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is farming Rosal Raid as DPS or non-fresh. This guide has mainly been focused on how to farm Rosal Raid as fresh support so far but it is also viable to farm Rosal Raid as non-fresh DPS. To prepare your characters to do DPS in Rosal Raid, please refer to the guide linked in the description. And generally to be DPS in Rosal Raid, you would need at least around 2.5 or 3 mil CP. People consider DPS people who do at least 10 mil damage per minute. This is calculated by taking your final damage in 12-7 and dividing it by the clear time. As mentioned earlier, once you clear on a character each week, you won't be able to get rewards anymore. However, you will get flame marks every phase cleared for every person in the party that is fresh or clearing for the first time that week. 
Flame marks can be traded to the alchemist in Oriano for various rewards. For this reason, there is still a point in doing Rosal Raid even if you're not fresh. Non-fresh tend to be DPS, however, popular high demand supports sometimes will be taken even if they are not fresh. Most commonly, endgame players trade for the red being sherbets, ancient fossil pills, and adaptation elixirs because these are heavily used in birth rate. Players may also exchange for shining mystic stones to help work on their FOJs. It is not as common to exchange for crimson trace reset tickets anymore. In terms of farming rosal rate as non-fresh, your profitability is pretty good. You can make around 30 mil ED every 30 minutes. For more specifics on how this is calculated and or to get a number that is more reflective of your own circumstances, please refer to the spreadsheets linked in the description. While I do highly recommend players make good support classes for Rosal Raid, some DPS will take you into raid regardless of your class as long as you're fresh because they want flame marks. Also, as mentioned earlier, regardless if you're fresh or not, you will still get Blazing Crystals when someone drops a weapon in your party. You only can get a max of one Blazing Crystal per run. This means that if more than one person gets an FOJ, the party will still only get one Blazing Crystal. Blazing Crystals can also be traded to the Blacksmith and Aria node for various rewards. Also, as mentioned earlier, you can also dismantle FOJs for 5 Blazing Crystals each or Rosal Raid accessories for 1 Blazing Crystal each. So, it's not shown on the screen right now, but you can also exchange 20 Blazing Crystals for an FOJ cube. Generally, players tend to exchange for Exodia or FOJ if they need those. Trading for Ancient Fossil Pills is also decently common for players who need consumables for birth rate. In terms of profitability, at the time of recording this video, it's most profitable to trade and sell red or blue shining mystic stones. For more specifics on how this is calculated and or to get a number that is more reflective of your own circumstances, please refer to the spreadsheets linked in the description. And there's actually one more thing I want to talk about, and that is why Rosal Raid is a very profitable option for newer players. If you sell the Mystic Stones you get from farming Rosal Raid as fresh support, you will make around 21 mil ED every 30 minutes. In comparison, you make around 13 mil ED every 30 minutes in 13.3, and from 10 to 22 mil ED every 30 minutes from SDs. I plan to update my best ways to make ED and Elsword guide in the near future and release more specific numbers and information later, but for now, I do want to emphasize that farming Rosal Raid is still a very viable way to make ED in a game despite the nerfs. Not only is this a decent amount of money, but farming Rosal Raid is also preferable for newer players because it doesn't require a lot of gear, and traditional forms of farming generally require high ERP for EXP gain, ED gain, and or item drop rate, while Rosal Raid doesn't require any of these to make a decent profit. Rosal Raid also only takes 3% stamina per gaunt, so it can be very stamina efficient as well. And finally, as mentioned a few times already, newer players need FOJ and Exodia, so while working for those, they can also make good money, and making more classes is important later on for L-Search Party Collection and Synergy.